So when we designed the market chain Monte Carlo uh, outlet, we interested in the reverse problem of that. And the reverse of problem is the following. Let's say you have a graph and each node of the graph is a sample from your target distribution. And you want to generate a random walk on this graph so that the stationary distribution is uniform, meaning that on average you spend the same amount of time in every node on the graph, since every node of the graph is the sample from the distribution, so uniformly uh, sample according to your density function. And the reverse problem uh, boils down to the problem of designing the transition probability matrix, matrix P, given that you know that your theta hat is uniform, means if you have n vertices on the graph, then you have probability 1 over n for each of those uh, vertices. And to design the probability transition matrix, matrix P, uh, so that the stationary target distribution is, is uniform, we basically make the following observation. Uh, you see that E is the eigenvector of P transpose. So vector E, which is basically equal to this 1 over N, so the vector that corresponds to the uh, uniform distribution, is the eigenvector of P transpose. Why is that? Because the matrix P is a uh, row stochastic, or oh, sorry, column stochastic, meaning if you sum up each of the columns, uh, it's gonna sum up to one. So P transpose is gonna be row stochastic. So if you take the sum across the elements of the row, then you're gonna get one because probability of leaving each of the nodes is, is one. Uh, so in this case, uh, we know that P transpose E equals to E. So that's an eigenvalue. Uh, and what we want to have now, we want to have our matrix P to basically be equal to P transpose. So we find, we want to find a matrix uh, so that uh, it's symmetric. Uh, and if you have a symmetric matrix, uh, then the stationary probability distribution of a random walk on a graph with such transition probability matrix is, uh, is uniform. And uh, that's it, that's, that's essentially what we need. So our goal is to build a Markov chain or random work uh, so that the limiting distribution pi is known a priori. And we need to consider what is called the balance equation. So balance equation is basically slightly stronger uh, uh, requirement than having uh, symmetric transition probabilities. So, so what does the symmetric transition probabilities uh, mean? It means that uh, if you're in the node one, uh, and there is a certain chance of going to node 3, uh, then it is the same probability of going from 3 to 1. So you have the this, this symmetry in transitions between each uh, neighboring uh, nodes on the graph. So the, the, the detailed equation is, is, again, is a slightly stronger condition than that, but intuition, hopefully, uh, the, the symmetry intuition gives you some sense why do we want that. And the balance equation tells us if we have... a station distribution pi and so it's basically a sequence of pi 1 all the way to pi n so for each of the nodes we have this number pi that tells us what is the uh, average amount of time we're going to spend in each of the vertices then what we want we want uh, pi i times pi i j equal to pi j equals to pi, p j i where those are uh, transition probabilities and pi is the stationary one. And uh, you can rewrite it. Uh, so if you sum up across the y, uh, i on both of the sides, uh, then actually you will have uh, pi i j pi i. And if you sum, if you sum up across uh, well, i on the right-hand side, then pi j does not depend on i, so it can get out of the sum. And the sum of pi j i across i just equals to 1. So this one equals to pi j. Now you can do the same thing and sum across the j's. Uh, and so you'll have a question for pi i. And then if you take those two equations and uh, then you take a ratio of left-hand side to the right-hand side, you'll see that the ratio of pi i j to pi j i, 
the ratio of basically going from i to j and from j to i is the ratio of pi j and pi i, uh, ratio of two station distributions. And essentially that's what we want now. We want to um, design pi i and j's uh, in such a way that uh, this relationship is satisfied. And the way the metropolis hasting does that, uh, it starts with some what is called a teaser transition uh, probabilities. Uh, we're going to call them pi i j zero. So this is something, this is our, again, initial guess about what those transitional probabilities should be. They don't have to match exactly the goal uh, or the target uh, distribution that we're trying to match. But if we can match it as close as possible, it's good, but it's not a requirement. And we want to find uh, new probabilities, uh, pi ij, and we're going to take them as a product, pi ij0 and some number bij. Uh, so that's the relationship here. Um, and we need to choose bij in such a way so that the balance equation is satisfied. And the balance equation tells us that the ratio of pij and pgi is the ratio of pj and uh, pi. And if we write it in the form of uh, P, I, J, 0, and B, I, J. Ah, and another requirement is that P, I, J, 0 equal to P, uh, J, I, 0. So we choose the transition, the, the teaser probability to be symmetric. So in these relationships, those two will cancel out and we just have a ratio of B, I, J to B, J, I. So we just need to figure out those uh, coefficients, B, I, J, and B, J, I. They don't have to be probabilities. They're just uh, scaling factors in this case. And essentially, we want it uh, to be some function of pji and, and pi, pi j and pi i. And the function has the following requirement. The function, of course, has to be defined uh, for any positive number because we have a ratio of two probabilities. And it has to map into number between uh, 0 and 1. Uh, b i j cannot be greater than 1 because you remember that uh, P i j equal to B i j times P i j zero. And this one has to be uh, less or equal than one. And we know that this one less or equal than one. So this one has to be less or equal than one as well. And so uh, the requirement for the function f is that it has to map any positive uh, number to the number between uh, zero and one. And also the requirement is that the ratio of uh, function evaluated at z and function evaluated at 1 over z has to be equal to z so that this um, uh, total balance equation is, uh, is satisfied. And there are a few examples uh, to this function. One example that is used for the metropolis hasting is f of z equal to mean of z and 1. It's easy to verify that this function satisfies the conditions that we need. Uh, it is, so we have mean z and 1. So uh, it is uh, positive for positive z's. So it's going to be greater than 0. And again, since it's only defined, we want it to be defined for positive z's. So the output is also positive. And of course, it's less or equal than 1, just because it's mean. And if we look at the ratio, um, so mean of z and 1 divided by mean of 1 over z and one so and it's equal so if z uh, less or equal than one then on the top you have z and on the bottom you have one so you have z and if z is greater or equal than one then you have one on the top one over z on the bottom so the result is also z so this this requirement is uh, satisfied as well and uh, this leads to what is called the metropolis algorithm. Uh, so at each state, uh, you draw from this uh, teaser distribution, P0, IJ, and then you generate next state, J. And then you calculate, uh, what I'm going to call it alpha IJ, so that's our uh, scaling factor. Uh, which is the minimum of 1 and pi i divided by pi j. The nice thing about the metropolis uh, algorithm is if you look at this part, then uh, the station distribution itself is not required to run the algorithm. We only need the ratio of pi and pi j. 
which means that if you remember the base equation and with the the start of the conversation about MC and MC algorithms, the hardest part is to calculate the integral at the bottom, the total probability, which is the scaling constant, the normalizing constant. And the uh, Metropolis algorithm allows us not to calculate it. We only need the uh, fraction of the two posteriors, which means that normalizing constants are going to cancel on both of them. And we only need the top part, which is the likelihood times the uh, prior. So we need the likelihood times prior for one uh, value of the parameters and then divided by the likelihood of prior to another values of parameters and no need to calculate the normalizing constant. So the, the fact that we only need the ratio uh, of the target distributions that we're trying to sample is, is very powerful here. It allows us to avoid calculating those complex integrals. And so anyhow, so we calculate this mean uh, of one and ratio of pi i and pi j and that becomes what is called the acceptance probability. Uh, so we move with j with probability a i j and we stay in the node i otherwise so so let's let's do a quick summary um, so we started with a limiting distribution we called it pi which is the limiting distribution of each of these nodes in the graph which we know well we assume that we know and then we designed an algorithm uh, so that we have a random walk on the graph. So each uh, node uh, is the sample from this distribution. And if we design our random walk in such a way so that the transition probabilities satisfy the total balance equation, then the pi, a priori known uh, distribution, will be the stationary distribution. So essentially, we will be visiting nodes at the uh, frequency proportional to the station distribution probabilities. And the way we did that, we started with some pi zero, which is our teaser distribution. And we say, okay, pi zero was not going to give us exactly what we need. But if we adjust it by this uh, scaling factor, we call it alpha ij, we're actually going to get the resulting uh, distribution of the transitions so that the result will satisfy this uh, total balance equation and we will have a guaranteed uh, probably will have will guarantee that the station distribution will be a priori known and to construct such a random walk on this graph we don't really need to know uh, the distribution pi the only thing that we need to know is this proportion of pi uh, pi i and, and pi j uh, and if you remember the, we started that it, it's hard to find the normalizing constant uh, of the posterior distribution. And when you look at the ratio, so in this case, pi is our posterior. And the, re, the only thing we need to know is we need to know the ratio of two posteriors calculated at two different values of the parameters. And we don't need to know the value of the normalizing constant. Uh, so no need to calculate total probability, which is just normalizing constant for the posterior. So the, the, the most expensive computational step of calculating the posterior distribution can be avoided um, by using this metropolis step.